Right, welcome back everybody. So, as we explained, the uh, world-renowned climate scientist, Professor Deborah Roberts, will present a global perspective of climate change. This is part of a climate change workshop for residents and other stakeholders to discuss climate change and its impact on Durban and its Etiquini Metro. So, Jade Poulter is there. Jade, uh, this is going to be very, very interesting because we've seen some crazy weather patterns, particularly in the province of KwaZulu-Natal, but also around the rest of the country as well. I mean, I can imagine that this is going to be one that you're going to be enjoying, especially because you cover all of these stories. Morning to you. Well, a very good morning to you, Leanne, and to your viewers back at home. It's so true, you know, in KwaZulu-Natal, we've been experiencing such er erratic weather conditions, and uh, we've spoken to so many experts on the ground. We're asking them, can we attribute this to, to global warming? And But it's not only in KZN. We've also seen uh, weather patterns chaining in, uh, changing in the Western Cape as well as the Eastern Cape. But here on the ground, here at the mayoral um, climate change workshop, we are expecting stakeholders and the municipality to be tabling, uh, mitigating ways of combating what we are seeing on the ground, the devastation with regards to communities who are residing in those low-lying areas who are often affected by the natural disasters that are currently taking place. But I am joined by renowned scientist, um, Ms. Um, Deborah um, Roberts, just to talk to us more about what we are expecting from this workshop. Thank you so much for joining us. I want to go straight into it, Prof. We've seen extreme rainfall and erratic weather conditions. Can we attribute this to climate change, especially here in KZN? Yes, we can. The science has advanced so that we can detect the climate change fingerprint in events now. And certainly a lot of attribution work was done on the major flooding events that we had here in the province and in Durban in April and May of last year. And there we were able to say with confidence that those floods were twice as likely to have happened because of climate change. So so we've seen a return uh, period move from 40 years to 20 years. And we know the kind of devastation that's caused both for our infrastructure and the loss of lives. Now, I just want to go into your personal achievement. You were also recently nominated to chair the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, the first female and African to do so. Uh, talk to us about this nomination to, the chair, to chair the IPCC and what this means for Africa and the Global South. Well, I think it's a huge shout out for African science. I think this is Africa's moment to lead. I think it's a real sign that the science being done on this continent across mitigation and adaptation is respected. I think it's also a big shout out to female scientists on the continent. We still have a imbalance in the gender pool as far as science goes and I hope this sends a strong message to young female scientists on the continent that you can lead at the global level. In terms of mitigating factors on the ground and ensuring that those that are living in the you know, low-lying areas Areas, especially here in KZN, we, where we see when a natural disaster occurs, many communities are affected. Um, what impact does this have socially, economically, and how can we also educate people with regards to what we're seeing currently taking place is, in fact, climate change, because many are not linking the two. I think it's really clear from the reports that the IPCC has produced during the six assessment cycle that human-induced climate change is an existential threat. It's threatening people's livelihoods, it's threatening people's lives, it's devastating infrastructure, it's impacting on the natural ecosystems that we need to survive. So I think that's the big message. This is no longer a minor event in our lives. It's undermining our development aspirations and undermining development gains. How do we get the message out? Well, science is one thing, but if you look at the IPCC reports, they're up to 3,000 pages long. No one is going to read that. So we've been working on producing material booklets and presentations which take the core messages for Africa and put them in simpler language so that we can talk to people about how these changes that they're a part of driving in many cases are impacting their lives and to look at the options for governments in terms of what is available for them to respond both from an adaptation and mitigation point of view. It'll be very interesting to see what else comes out in this workshop. Thank you so much for joining us, Prof. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Well, that was Prof. Roberts um, just began talking to us about what we are expecting um, here at the workshop of the climate workshop that is currently taking place at the Albert Latuli International Convention Center. Um, as you heard, Prof is also going to be chairing the IPCC. Um, and, you know, it's going to be very interesting to also see how the Global South contributes to fighting uh, global warming. As you can see,
see, Leanne, um, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's happening. It really is happening. We can't not link the two. The severe weather and erratic weather patterns is climate change. It's back to you.